background on that. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Valpolicella. Valpolicella is in the Veneto wine region, which is in the northeast corner of Italy. And here's a uh, little closer view of Veneto. Those of you that attended the last wine tasting, that would not be Deb, but those of you that attended the last wine tasting would know we had a Suave, and that's a next door neighbor of, of Valpolicella. Um, things to know about Valpolicella, it is a wine region, not a grape. Red wines of the area are made with the same grapes, but with different production methods. And that's how we get three wines from the same grapes. It's a matter of how they're produced. And we're going to learn how they're, going, how they're produced tonight. Huh. The main grape used in wines from Valpolicella is called Corvina. It's blended with uh, primarily Rondinella and Molinara. And, several, and, and then they also use several other indigenous grapes. But those are the, the big three with Corvina being the, uh, the alpha among those big three. The wine must consist of at least 45%, but no more than 95% Corvina. So there's a lot of Corvina in the wine, but I've actually had a 100% Corvina wine from the area and they wouldn't let it be called Valpolicella. It was labeled as a Corvina because it didn't conform to the rules of, of blending in at least one of the other grapes. Those Italians. Yeah. And there's, diff there's different classifications within Valpolicella. Valpolicella is just north of Verona and just uh, east of Lake Garda. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, different classifications. If, if you see a Valpolicella classica or classico, is this means that it's planted, this is a hillier area. The grapes are planted on, on foothills with better sun exposure. So they, they ripen a little, a little better than if they were grown on flatlands. And this is our, also the original area of Valpolicella. They expanded the area after they created the classification. It's limestone, clay, and volcanic soil. So you're gonna, with all that minerality, you're going to get a little more complex wines than you're going to get from some of the other areas. And it's slower ripening uh, so that wines here have a little less fruit and a little more acidity because the, the soil uh, affects the ripening and that sort of thing. So they're going to be a little bit more complex wines. Now, from the rest of Valpolicella, they're planted on flatlands. It's, it's warmer sand and gravel soil, so the, uh, the soil is going to allow the grapes to ripen a little sooner. The wines are simple, fruity, and with light tannin, which means they're not going to be real puckery. They're not going to be real grippy when you taste them. They're just going to be simple, easy drinking wines. And you really, uh, you can age the classicas a little bit or the classicos a little bit. These, they're probably as good as they're going to get when they bottle them. So there's really no reason to age just garden variety Valpicella. And you get a lot of red cherry flavors and that sort of thing. You had to pick one dominant flavor, it would be like, like a ripe cherry. Now, the, if, you, if you got the Zeneto, it's a Valpicella superiori. Uh, a superiority can be from either the classical or, or the non-classical. So region. that's where we got that. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, it uses higher quality grapes. They uh, they use better what they consider better clones and that sort of thing to make it. In order to get the superiority label, it has to age for a minimum of one year before bottling an oak. That's not to say that they buy, they age it in brand new oak bottles. A lot of times, if you saw like the uh, my background, they might be in huge oak barrels, so they don't get a lot of oak contact. And on top of that, those barrels have probably been there for decades, so you don't get a lot of oak flavoring. But what you do get is a little bit of oxygen, which makes the wine a little more complex than they would be if uh, they weren't aged in those areas. It has to be at least 12% alcohol. 
and it's usually fuller bodied wines. They usually have more body than uh, 14. Than, uh, than other uh, slide that I never got there. So first we're gonna talk about Amarone, how Amarone is made. What you see there on those racks are the same grapes used to make the Valpicella you just drank, but they dry them out over a period of time. So a lot of the water leaves and you just have like the, the, the syrupy, uh, a little bit of water, but uh, whatever uh, content the, the grapes have, the sugar and some of the fibers that are in the grapes. Amarone is made by taking the same grapes used to make Valpicella and drying out the grapes to remove their water before pressing them. So what water does in Valpicella, it sort of dilutes a lot of the flavor that you get from the grape. But if you let it dry out, the flavors are going to be a lot more intense. Um, it, this is called the Passato method. So if you ever hear anybody talking about that, it's the process of letting your grapes dry out a little bit before you press them to make the wine. Other wines that go through this process are sometimes labeled as a passamento. That's another thing. So if you see passato or a passamento on a wine label, you know that the grapes were dried out a bit before they made the wine. Now, Valpicella Rapasso is, is a combination of the two. After they get done pressing the grapes to make the Amarone, they'll take regular Valpicella and have it sit with the skins and the seeds that are left and a little bit of juice that's left over from making the Amarone. So they'll let those two things sit together. So a lot of the flavor that you, some of the flavor that you get in Amarone from the, uh, from the skins and the seeds and the little bit of juice is transferred into the Rapasso. So it's sort of a hybrid a uh, rapasso is sort of a hybrid between or a, a cross or a clone. And I, it's, it's sort of the, the love child of, of Valpicella and Amarone because what you'll do is you'll have the, the, the Valpicella mixed in with the leftover seeds and skins after they squeeze the Amarone. They'll let it sit there. So a lot of the flavor from those skins and the seeds and a little bit of juice transfers into the Rapasso. It, this makes a fuller bodied wine than regular Valpicella. And this is often referred to as baby Amarone. And as a rule, they generally cost about a third as much as Amarone. I know you can never trust me again, but there's also another, a fourth face, but it didn't fit into the three faces of Eve's thing. Eve's thing. Um, there's a, a Valpicella Ricciotto. It is a sweet wine. If you've ever had port or any or sauternes, it's about half the sweetness of either of those wines. But Valpicella Ricciotto is a sweet wine. It's made just like Amarone. It's made with the Amarone grapes. It's made with the grapes that dry out. But what they do is they stop the fermentation early so that not all of the sugar is converted into alcohol. So it's a sweet wine. I've only had a couple of them. It's sweet, but it's not super sweet. It's just, it's, it's just absolutely balanced. It's a wonderful wine. It's very hard to find though. I, it's, it's almost impossible to find. I brought a bottle home from Zanato when I went and visited them. I had read about it, I'd never had it. I had the person that was doing our wine tasting. I asked him if he had some we could taste, he obliged us and everybody in our group brought home a bottle. It was so nice. It's usually sold in half bottles. It's, it's reasonably expensive. Um, the word Amarone translates to great bitter to differentiates itself from Ricciotto. Amarone is considered dry, a little bit bitter because of the tannins. The Ricciotto is considered sweet. So 
that's one of the differentiators between whenever they invented this process, they made the sweeter version, the Ricciotto, and the drier, more bitter version, the Amarone. Uh, 